would, you'd be turning to the book of Acts. We'll study a little bit, the, starting in the sixth chapter. And as we were reading this, we were studying some about Peter and in the book of Acts. And uh, I got to thinking about this, and I got to looking back and looking back, and I got to thinking, and the Lord uh, showed me this concerning these chapters in the book of Acts, you s how that he had a job that he needed, that he wanted done, and how he started this job. And he started this job, or this, this, this thing, with, with Stephen. And Stephen, Stephen was a uh, 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 man that was full of the, the Holy Ghost, full Amen. of the Spirit. And uh, he is the one that uh, was the one that started this. And we look on a little bit uh, more, and we see that Cornelius got involved with it. Cor the angel come to Cornelius, and, right. and, uh, and he had this he had this vision. And uh, uh, after we got through with that, then Peter had to talk to Cornelius, and then. Uh, on the way to Damascus Road, God got to talking to Paul. Amen. And got him ready. And you see, uh, you see what God can do sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes we don't realize, we just don't realize what God is doing for us. And we don't realize how that God can use us in a, in a way, and it may be just like a little bitty snowball. And it's turn it's up on a mountain and he turns it loose. And listen, that snowball just keeps growing and keeps growing. And this is what happened for the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. All the Gentiles, it was they, it was strictly Jews. Anyway, so this is our this is the outline for our study this morning, the reading. And uh, you can I'm sure that all of you have uh, uh, studied the most of these things. And I've heard Brother Larry preach on it, and it hadn't been that long ago. And uh, of course. You know, uh, as I study these things and I remember scriptures and things that Brother Larry's preached on and Brother Adam has taught, uh, the devil will come to me and say, well, hey, they just got through teaching that. But, uh, you know, I've learned uh, not to listen to that. Right. Because, listen, when he comes to you and, and tells you, now you don't need to do that, you need to do something else. Hey. He's got a reason for it. And he's, it's just the same thing it was with, with the Lord uh, getting Stephen ready uh, uh, for his, his great message that he preached. And so this morning we want to start in the book of Acts in chapter 6 and verse 8. And this is, this is uh, after that he was, he was, he was, there was all of these uh, uh, disciples had chosen him, laid hands on him and prayed for him. And uh, he, uh, he was a deacon. And so in verse 8, And Stephen's full of, the, of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people. Now this is something you need to think about this morning. The things that he did here uh, really, really and truly before God used him to preach this message mm -hmm. that he preached. And this morning, we, as God's people, uh, have the privilege of knowing Him as our Savior. Amen. And we can, we can do the same things. Uh, and it may not be that we can cause people to fly and, and the lame to walk and all this, but listen, there are things that we can pray for. Amen. And listen, it may not happen. It may not even happen in your lifetime. But listen, again, it may happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, we know God and we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and 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 we we need to stay in tune with the Lord and and be able to whisper a prayer uh, for people. Uh, and you know, and uh, a, a lot of times, you know, or sometimes uh, we just we wonder why things don't happen. But it's not God's will at that time for it to happen. And so here he has done he done all of these things, and now he's full of the Holy Spirit. And notice here, and, and uh, 
And so then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the, the synagogue of the Libertines and the Cyrians and the Alexandrians and of them of Scythia and of the Asian disputing with, C uh, with Stephen. They were disputing with him and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Amen. Then they suburns or uh, they were using uh, illegal arguments or are accusing him of false things, uh, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God, and they stirred up the people and the ruler uh, and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and called him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, this man ceaseth not to blaspheme the word against the holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the custom which Moses delivered us and all that that set in the council and all that set in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Amen. And this to me brings me back to this uh, a, a, comforting, a comforting thought he was witnessing to these people and trying to tell them that the Lord Jesus Christ is Savior, and and all and and he was trying to tell them, and these these clans and all were were saying, no, he's lying to you, he's lying to you. But listen, when it's all said and done, and you do what you can do for the Lord, listen, he showed them there this. When they look steadfastly on him, it says here that they 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 saw in his face as it had been the face of an angel. Mm -hmm. and people, you know, they had a hard heart in them. You know that the devil was controlling them because they didn't pay any attention to that. And listen, even after that, over in the next chapter, after he had preached to them about Moses and the 400 years in captivity down in Egypt, they, we see here that he was preaching to them and he looked up to heaven. And uh, let me see if I can find it right quickly here. Uh, uh, I did have it down here somewhere. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's a... I think I, I may have turned two pages. Let me make, make sure. Uh, yeah, in verse uh, 7, uh, in verse 53, or 51, he says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ear, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your Father did, so do you. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayer and murderer, who have received the law, the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. And he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked Amen. up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said behold I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God Amen. And then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witness laid down their clothes and, and and cast him and, uh, and stone and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet whose name was Saul so we see here again this death how that Stephen dies and keep in mind this death that he died he didn't die no painful death but he said he looked into heaven and he said I see Jesus standing on the right hand of Amen. God listen people he, he and, and what did he say I think it says here in verse 60 and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. He had the love of God in him for the last minute. Amen. And he says here, and when he had said this, he fell asleep. Right. And so this morning, 
we as God's people ought to understand who we're serving and how that we are to act and how that we are even though even though he told them he called them stiff necked and uncircumcised well they were mm -hmm. and he was preaching the truth to them because they were uncircumcised in heart they didn't have the, the love of God in them and they were stiff necked and, and they didn't want to bow their knees to the Lord and it made them so mad that they killed me but in all of this Stephen's prevailed Amen. and he went on to be with the Lord now, here we see the second step of Saul, as Saul is in here, and he, he is the one of them that laid his clothes at, the, at Stephen's uh, feet. And here it says, And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except, except the apostles. And so we see as we as we read here about Saul, and I want to read I want to read to you just a little bit more in verse uh, I think it's in uh, in, Cornelius, in look in verse ten now. <clears throat> and there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion. Now this centurion was in charge of a hundred men, hundred soldiers, uh, or a hundred. Uh, servants, whatever, and that's the reason they call him a centurion, and of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that's sincere, earnest, and uh, reverent to the Lord, uh, and, and, and a devout man, and one who feared God, and all his house, which gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. Now here again is a, here is a, a thing this morning that uh, he was close to the Lord, but he didn't have grace. He didn't understand grace. He was he was still obeying the law. But notice him here uh, as he as he give much alms to the poor, and he had the love of God in him just as Stephen's did as he was preaching to those stiff necked and uncircumcised uh, people there. And he says here. Uh, and he and in verse the bottom part of verse two and prayed to God always. And he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. When he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayer and thy alms are come up for a memorial before thee. So again. Here's something this morning. Whatever you, uh, whatever you give in the name of, of, of God, whatever you share with people in the name of the Lord, listen, they don't go unseen. They don't go unknown. And uh, a lot of times we, we, we see people and we want to make excuses about uh, they're able to do this or they're able to do that. But listen, that's not none of our business. If we feel the tug of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, said, hey, you need to share with that man. You better do it. Mm -hmm. It's because, because it will help the man, and you never know if you give him a, bag, a little bag of salty peanuts, what that will do for that man, because if you give it to him in the name of the Lord, listen, that might lead to his, help him with his salvation. And again, that little bit that you do it, if you do it in the name of the Lord, and, and then it will go undone. And here, this is why this angel came to Cornelius. He says here, he says, uh, uh, here he says, he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour, of God coming and saying unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before thee. And so your prayers for your loved ones, for your enemies, your alms for your loved ones or for your enemies, they don't go undone. Amen. You can, uh, you can do it with a heart of love and that's the only way that you need to do it because if it's a bitterness in your heart, you're better off just to go away and right. turn off. And, and go somewhere and, and ask the Lord to forgive you of that and turn and go back. And, and, and then you can, you can do it with a heart of love. But that's, that's a problem with me. And that's a problem with, uh, I know a lot of people, is that I look on the wrong side of it. And the devil 
he he gets in there and he gouges and he punches and he's he's giving me all these things. He should do this and he should do that. But listen, that's not that's not the way that that's not the way that that's best for us. Amen. It's, it's just not good for us. Now, uh, you may stick that money back in your pocket or you may stick that bag of peanuts back in your pocket and walk off and say, well, let him, let him get along best he can. The peanuts will rot. Mm -hmm. That money, oh, you'll find you'll, one day, one day, and you'll find holes in your pockets. That's what the Bible says. And so this morning, remember these things that we're reading here about the alms and all of this. And so he said that your alms had brought up and he says, now send men to Joppa in verse 5 and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter. Now, he had sent Peter earlier to go and lodge with this man by the name of Simon to the seaside. And Peter just went up there to, I don't know, to visit or whatever. But uh, the angel knew where it was at. Right. He said, you go, to, you send him to, send him to Joppa. See, he, there's one there that's, uh, that, uh, uh, let me look and see. Now, in verse 5, and now send men, here, this is the angel talking, to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and he shall tell me what thou oughtest to do. And so, this is what he did now. He picked two of his men and one of his most trusted ones. And he he knew this was important. And listen, if we if we have things like this to come up in our life, we don't need to haphazardly do this thing, but we need to take we need to take close attention and do it the best we can because we're going to see here that Cornelius got a blessing out of this world from this. Right. Year. So here in this again, I I'll, I'll find where I need to go. Uh, here's here's Peter. Now notice. On, in verse 9, uh, on the morrow as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, these are going to jump. Peter went up into the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So Peter would have been done eating and he would, have, he would have missed this trance, but he, 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 they didn't have it ready. So you see how God works in these things. And saw so heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet, knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth. Wherein there are all manner of four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to Peter, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now, if you if you that are listening or you that are here, you go back into your Old Testament and it will say, it will show you all of the unclean right. animals and there is a certain fish and there are certain fowls and there are certain things that God told the people not to eat. And now, and this is why Peter is saying here, I've never eaten anything unclean. But now notice here, uh, uh, in verse 13, and there came a voice, rise, kill me, in verse 14, but Peter said, not so, Lord, for I've never eaten anything clean, anything that's common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that call, thou, call not thou common. Amen. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. And while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gate. So you see, you see how this puzzle, how this thing is just, it's just coming together and God is working it just like that he wants it to be worked. And he's built, he's, he's, he's brought all of these things He's, he's and, and all this. So now, here again, while, uh, and, and then in verse 21, and Peter went down to the men which were come sent him from, from was were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. 
what is the cause whereof ye are come. This kind of this kind of give Peter the clue. And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, and a just man, and one that feared God, and of a good report among all nations of the Jews, was born from God by holy angel to send for thee into the house, into his house, and to bear word of this. And then called he them in, they lodged their, lodged them, and on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And so here they go, Peter not afraid, Peter not worried, and Peter knows something has happened because of their testimony where that Cornelius had told them, hey, this angel appeared to me and he told me to, to, to send after Peter and he'll tell me what to do. And so after this, then here we see in, in verse 10 here, I believe it is, yeah, in verse 10, uh, uh, in, in verse 34, here's Peter. Then Peter, he's at the, at the Cornelius' house. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is not respect of person, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh, Amen. and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The words which God sent unto the children of Israel preached, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judah and, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. And, Pete, and, and, and Peter is preaching how that Jesus has, has, has brought grace and, has, and, and, has, and has, has helped people. And he says here, uh, uh, how God had anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of him, of the devil. For God was with him, and we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hang on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and, and slew him openly. And not, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he is telling all of this to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the people of Cornelius here. And, and so he says, uh, while Peter, in verse 44, while Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which heard the word. Now this is the second, this is the second time that this has happened because over in, 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 in Acts, uh, in another place there, uh, as they were assembled, I think it's in verse chapter 2 there, they were together and the Holy Ghost fell on them and they all spake with different tongues and, and they all heard this with the same with the same language and the Holy Ghost fell on them and baptized them there. This is, a, this is the one that the Gentiles received. This is the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the Gentiles. And that's why today that we can we can say that the Holy Ghost dwells within us. That those that are saved, the Holy Ghost is in, in, in our body in this temple. It's our it's the it's the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we have that we have that Spirit within us. And listen, that's the one that bears witness with other people's spirit that has the same Spirit. You can. You can feel it, you can know it, and, and you, you, you've you got to trust it because Amen. Listen, you don't distrust the Holy Spirit. When He tells you something, you may say, well, I'll think upon it, or I, I just can't believe that. But listen, don't do it that way. Just wait upon the Lord, and He'll show you that He was telling you right. And I'll tell you what, the biggest part of the time, I... I have this thing with with other people <clears throat> that want to tell me how they're ready to fly off, you know, and they're ready to go. But listen, uh, and I, I don't I don't I don't want to criticize nobody. But listen, I, the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will not bear witness with people. I, I, he just won't do it. He just won't do it. And so I know, hey, you know, I just have to watch him mm -hmm. because that's 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 the Holy Spirit's job. He's to comfort and he's to bear he's to bear witness with us. And so this morning, hey, uh, don't think Junior Page is crazy, but listen, you you just you just you just keep on trying that because it, it works. 
Now, I want to get a little bit more here because we got we got another person we want to run into here in a minute. Uh, in verse 44, uh, I, I believe I never read, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they were they of the circumcision which followed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that the Gentiles also was poured out of the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be, not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he recommended them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then praise they him to tarry certain days. Now, we want to get a, a little bit a little bit more on this right here, and I want to read uh, something for you from uh, 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 the. Uh, I don't think I wrote it down, but <clears throat> for the call, tell me, brother Larry, you know, for the call was struck down on the road to Damascus. It's in uh, Acts nine. Nine. Okay. Yeah, in nine chapter uh, chapter nine verse one. And Saul, yet breathing out, threatening and slaughtering against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to, to Damascus, to the synagogue, that he, if he found any of his, this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And, that, and, and it's the same thing according to this, uh, Lord, Lord. And, and, and uh, this, this, is another, this is another part that God, is, that God was planning for this, this visit that with Peter and with Cornelius and with Stephen. It had to be this way, and 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 uh, Saul was the one that uh, received the Lord, and the Lord called Ananias and told him, said, "You go visit Paul," and he said, "Paul has he has been known to kill people and put them in jail, but God told him, He says." He's a chosen vessel. Mm -hmm. He's a chosen vessel, and don't don't worry about him because he's a chosen vessel, and he is uh, he is a, a chosen for the Gentiles to to preach the word of God to the Gentiles, and all of these things, all of these things came together, and it's just like this book here, all all the books of this Bible, one day. They're going to all come together. Mm -hmm. It's going to be completed, and whether we, while we're here, can get them all together, it's not. But one day, when we stand before God, and when we uh, are there for eternity, we'll understand all of this thing. Everything in God's Word that is in here is for a purpose. Amen. It's, it's a part of the puzzle, if you want to call it a puzzle. It's part of the plan. And, and God made the plan way before we were even thought of. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I, I meet people uh, that's got good, sound thoughts. But listen, they cannot believe, they cannot accept the fact that God foreordained, He made the... He made the plan. Right. He predestinated. They cannot grasp it. They cannot grasp it, and and they're they're very knowledgeable in the word, but they cannot grasp that. They cannot. Don't you think? It's, they're saying, don't you think that that uh, man God can change his mind, or that man can change his mind, and all of these things, and they've got all these things worked up. But listen, it's all. It was all laid out. Amen. With God. And Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was there with him, and it was all laid out, and uh, it's coming to pass. And whether whether or not we uh, can see it at this time, maybe not. It may take a, a three or four years down the road. We look back and say, "Well, that's the reason for that." But listen, there's a reason for uh, all things, and. Uh, 
You just you just wait upon the Lord because if things things happens to you or things comes about and you people tell you things, no, there's a reason for it because you're God's and uh, he he wants you to hear these things or he won't let you hear them. Right. And so uh, I hope it, <clears throat> if nothing else, what I've read will refresh your memory and give you a little bit more uh, uh, thoughts about uh, how that God works. Because everything everything that goes on in our lives is for a purpose. Amen. It's a purpose. And so we need to, we need to uh, uh, study more than what we do. But anyway, I appreciate y'all listening and thank y'all for listening to us. Amen.